Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, and a few other gig companies have got a small victory this past week when it came to the ballot measure that was approved for the November election and will be going to the public to see if they will get this ballot initiative or not and try to be exempt from AB5. If you truly read some of the text of this ballot measure, you can see how sneaky Uber, Lyft, and these other companies are when it comes down to it because they created a lot of loopholes in the language and how they are going to compensate and pay their drivers. And that's what we're talking about right now. Hey everyone, Chris here from Real Rideshare Stories. If you're new to the channel and you're looking for different things within the rideshare industry, whether it's updates to what's going on, news, tips and tricks for passengers and drivers, or what actually happens on Real Rideshare Rides, start now by hitting that subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications. Also make sure to check the description below for other helpful information and tips. So a few days ago, I did a video on how Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, and a few of the other gig companies have won a small victory when it comes to the ballot initiative that they are trying to propose, and it was successful in getting into the November election. So it will be on the ballot in November for everybody in the state of California to vote on. So you're going to see a lot of back and forth between the state of California, uh, people who are for AB5, as well as organizations for AB5, and you're going to see a large push from Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Postmates, and all the other companies that are behind trying to be exempt from AB5. In yesterday's video, I did a video on how Uber fired the first shots by saying upwards of 158,000 drivers who normally drive in the state of California may not be able to if they go to employees. Then also Uber said in that same report that you could see anywhere from 20 to 120% increase in what it will look like for what a passenger pays. Now today, let's dive into what that ballot measure is actually going to look like and what the loopholes really are in it and how sneaky Uber, Lyft, and these other companies really are because they're the ones who are championing it. They're the ones who want it. And they're the ones who are kind of writing the text behind this. So it's very interesting to see exactly how sneaky it really is because there are certain loopholes. There are certain things that are put into the language of it. And again, if you want to check out the actual 24 page PDF ballot measure initiative, link will be in the description below. I may go over it line by line later, but I'm going to reference an article that was done by a particular individual who actually had put in some time and uh, effort into breaking down the loopholes and what it'll look like more so when it comes to this um, minimum wage issue that they're talking about where they're saying it'll be at 120% the minimum wage, which should be about $15.60. But in actuality, they found it to be much, much less, actually about a third of what it would be per hour because of the way the loopholes actually are. This is the article right here that I'm going to be referencing to, and it's UC Berkeley Labor Center. And the title of the article is The Uber Lyft Ballot Initiative Guarantees Only $5.64 an Hour. And a link will be in the description below, so if you want to check this out, then you absolutely can. So it says Uber, Lyft, and DoorDash have unveiled their ballot initiative to undo historic worker protections enshrined in AB5, California's new law that tightens their criteria for worker classification. The initiative claims drivers will receive a guaranteed pay equal to 120% of the minimum wage. That would be $15.60 in 2021 when the California minimum wage will be $13. Our review of the initiative leads to a very different estimate. After considering multiple loopholes in the initiative, we estimate that the pay guarantee for Uber and Lyft drivers is actually the equivalent of a wage 
of $5.64 per hour. And yes, that statement is very true. If you read that ballot initiative, uh, I will leave a link in the description below so you can check that out because it is 24 pages long. The first few pages are some signatures and things like that. And the last few pages are some definitions and things, what each thing means. And then the bulk of it is actually the measure itself. And yeah, there are a lot of loopholes in it. And if you read through it, you will see those loopholes. So um, there is a real possibility there and they're going to break it down in this article exactly how they went from $15.60 down to $5.64 per hour. So Harry Truman was president the last time the inflation adjusted value of the minimum wage was that low. Indeed, the real level of the pay guarantee is about one third of the requirement minimum pay for drivers under New York City's new driver pay standard. Here are the loopholes that change the guarantee from $15.60 to $5.64. See also accompanying graphic. Like I said, we're going to go through this so you know exactly what it's going to look like. The first loophole, driver waiting time is not counted as work time. And that is very true. Again, if you read that ballot initiative, it talks about what is engaged time and then they talk about driver time and things like that. So you can see differentiations between how they're going to uh, create and manage how they're going to pay the drivers in this new ballot initiative. So it says the initiative's guarantee only applies when the drivers are engaged with passengers, when they are en route to picking up a passenger, and when they have a passenger in their vehicle. These engaged times amount to only 67% of the driver's working time. The companies would not pay for the approximately 33% of the time that drivers are waiting between passengers or returning from trips to an outlying area. But such time is a necessary part of driver's work. Whether a driver wants to work one hour, eight hours, or any amount in between, they must wait between dropping off passengers and getting their next ride. Not paying for that time would be the equivalent of a fast food restaurant or retail store saying they will only pay the cashier when a customer is at the counter. We have labor and employment laws precisely to protect workers from that kind of exploitation. Taking into account that the drivers would only be paid for 67% of all the time they are working, actual earnings per working hour would be 67% of $15.60 or $10.45. So you can see all they did right there was take 67% of the 15.60 to get 10.45. The second loophole with this is unreimbursed costs of driving while waiting for a ride. So much of the driver's waiting time is spent driving and cruising. Drivers may be heading back from a drop off to an area where they are more likely to have a pickup, or they may be circling into downtown areas where there is no place to park. Under the company's proposal, none of the costs, which would include gas, wear and tear on the vehicle, etc., of driving while waiting would be covered as a reimbursed employee expenses. Uber drivers average 20 miles an hour. Therefore, they drive 6.6 .6 miles each hour, or 33% of 20, that would not be reimbursed. It. So multiplying the internal revenue service mileage reimbursement rate of 58 cents a mile by 6.6 .6 miles, we obtain $3.83 of unreimbursed expenses per hour of driving while waiting for a ride. So that's $10.45 minus $3.83, and that leaves $6.62. And again, one of the big things too is their driving pay is 30 cents per mile. It's not even the 58 cents per mile that the IRS says is what should be paid out. So it's even less than what the federal uh, level is at. Going on to number three's loophole is under reimbursed costs during driver's engaged driving time. So the ballot initiative says the driver's cost of driving during the time they are engaged with passengers will be reimbursed at 30 cents per mile. Exactly what I was just saying. But the IRS estimates that the real per mile costs of owning and operating a vehicle are 58 cents per mile. 
The initiative's lower figure assumes that drivers already have a vehicle and are driving just a few hours a week. It does not include all the fixed costs of acquiring, owning, and operating a vehicle. Yet a small share of drivers who work long hours account for the vast majority of all drivers' miles. 10% of transportation platform drivers account for about 57% of driver earnings. These drivers need to cover the fixed costs of owning and operating a vehicle. According to the ballot initiative, Uber and Lyft would purchase insurance for drivers during the time they are engaged to pick up a passenger or have a passenger in their vehicle. Since insurance costs about 20 cents a mile and again using the IRS 58 cents per mile standard, the initiative's offer of 50 cents per mile for costs and insurance still leaves drivers 8 cents per mile short in covering their driving expenses when they are engaged with passengers. We multiply the 8 cents per mile deficit by the average 13.4 miles of engaged driving miles each hour. This result is $1.07 under reimbursed driving costs working per hour. Uh, subtracting $1.07 from 662, we obtain $5.55 per hour. And going on to the fourth loophole, they're talking about the healthcare stipend. The companies would also offer a healthcare stipend to drivers who average at least 15 engaged hours a week in a quarter and who are enrolled in a qualifying health plan. Drivers averaging at least 15, but less than 25 engaged hours in a quarter would receive a stipend equivalent to 41% of the average premium for a covered California bronze plan. Those working more than 25 engaged hours would receive a stipend equal to 82% of the same plan. The vast majority of drivers would not qualify for this benefit. To be consistent with our treatment of expenses, we include the value of the benefit for a 30 hour a week driver. We estimate the stipend for a 30 hour week uh, driver would average about $1.22 an hour. Details available from the authors. Adding $1.22 to $5.55, we obtain an hourly pay level of $6.77. So that actually does increase it a little bit, uh, but they're talking about how it's going to work. And most drivers will probably not qualify for it because you have to be in at least 15 engaged hours, which means you have to have somebody in the car or heading to a ride itself. Not that 33% of time where you're waiting for a ride. And going on to the fifth loophole, uh, unpaid payroll taxes and employee benefits. Since the drivers would be classified as independent contractors, they would be required to pay both the employer and employee's share of payroll taxes. And they would not receive paid rest breaks, paid meal breaks, paid sick leave, unemployment insurance, and other benef benefits required to be provided to employees under state and federal law. The cost of these taxes and the value of those benefits together add up to about $1.13 per hour. Subtract that $1.13 from the $6.77, we arrive at an hourly pay value of only $5.64 an hour. This estimate may be too high as it does not take into account the cost of worker compensation insurance, under the ballot initiative, companies would provide some occupational accident insurance, but at levels well below the protections required by California's laws for employees. And then it talks and shows on this graphic right here exactly what it is. So they're saying subtract the hidden costs, that $5.15 of unpaid waiting time, the 383 unreimbursed waiting time expenses, $1.07 underpayment for driving expenses, gas vehicle wear, wear and tear car insurance, and $1.13 unpaid payroll taxes and employee benefits, and then add $1.22 average for drivers working 30 hours a week. Now, the problem with this, drivers are stuck between a rock and a hard place because they don't really know which side is better. Is employee better or is it this ballot initiative that's going to be better? And unfortunately, it's a hard answer to really figure out because 
as you can see with the article that we referenced just now, there is a lot of loopholes for Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, and these other companies to really um, make it so it's not the best scenario for the drivers, but what's better in their interests. And that's why they're backing this ballot initiative. But yet on the other side of where the state is, they're seeing the exploitations that these companies are truly doing, which I'm not disagreeing with in any way, shape or form, but do they really have driver's best interests at heart by saying, well, you should be an employee and therefore you'll get employee benefits, which, yeah, sure, some of those employee benefits are great. But if it goes to scheduled shifts, if it goes to a certain amount per week in terms of how many hours you have to work, et cetera, things like that, it may not benefit everybody and it probably won't benefit a lot of people. Uh, so it could be a real problem when it comes down to it. And again, they are trying to get more tax revenue out of this because they'll be able to collect on certain taxes that they aren't able to collect on right now, which could be a several hundred million to even billion dollars that they are poised to gain because of AB5. And again, it leaves drivers in the middle where they don't really know what's going to be the best option for them. So the best thing I can say to drivers, especially in the state of California, is to make sure you read this ballot measure. Make sure you talk to more people when it comes to being an employee for Uber, Lyft, DoorDash, Postmates, whatever it might be, um, and see exactly what's going to benefit you the best. And unfortunately, there is no blanket answer when it comes down to it saying one over the other. Either way, I think both of them are screwed up. I think the AB5 law is, is just not good for drivers overall. And I really don't think that this ballot initiative is either because of those loopholes. Now, if they really worked together, meaning they work together with the state to make them happy, they work together with the companies to make them happy, and their bottom line is still okay, and worked with the drivers to see what would benefit drivers the most would still be a better option. And unfortunately, either side of the coin, I don't think that we are there. Um, if you have any input on any of that, please comment below, let me know, See or say what you would like to say as well. If you have any ideas on how to make that ballot initiative better, if you have any ideas on how it's going to look in terms of possible employment, because honestly, we really just don't know when it comes down to it. But comment below, let me know any of your thoughts and what you think on this entire uh, issue when it comes to these loopholes and just uh, employment versus independent contractor, the exploitations that are faced as drivers, and anything else when it comes down to it. Now that's the end of this video. Make sure you subscribe and ring the bell for notifications so you'll be notified every time a new video is uploaded. Also make sure to check the description below for other helpful information and tips, as well as the articles and the AB5 ballot initiative that Uber and Lyft are trying to uh, propose. Links will be in the description. And as always, never drink and drive. Always tip your drivers, your delivery drivers, and your shoppers. And we'll see you next time.